Hello everyone, so we're in December and that means unfortunately we need to start talking about Christmas. Now if you're anything like me, you're quite hard to buy for. People know I'm into woodworking but they don't know what to get me. So I'm putting together a Christmas gift guide for makers. Let's start with the obvious one, clamps. Someone once said, you can never have too many. I don't think anyone's ever repeated that since, but let me show you what I've been using. For years, I mainly used quick clamps and parallel clamps. Now, I still use the quick clamps, but I like F clamps and I have several different styles. My most used ones are the same style, but different lengths. I've got about four different lengths of these. They're really heavy duty and they've got the rubber pads so they don't mark your wood. You probably see these in most videos. Another clamp I've got that's really the same, but I just like the design of it being all metal, not even painted. There's something about that that appeals to me. Without the rubber pads, you have to put a bit of wood in, but it means you can clamp other things like metal if you was welding as well. I just really like them as aesthetic things. The last clamp works fantastic, but it's also just a joy to use. There's something about it that just makes me smile every time I use it. The ratchet is just very satisfying. Also means you can do it pretty much one-handed. You can definitely take them off one-handed. And they have quite a lot of clamping force. So yeah, some clamps. I don't think there's a single woodworker in the world that would say they wouldn't be happy with some extra clamps. If you want to spend a little more, we're going to go for a power tool. And I'm going to choose something that used to be my least favourite tool to now one I reach for all the time. And that's the jigsaw. I started off with a cheap one and I absolutely hated it. This thing, though, is fantastic. I really like the barrel grip and all the features. I did do a review of it, so you can check that out if you want. Maybe if you don't like the jigsaw, you're like me and just don't have the right one yet. Let's go from a power tool to a power tool accessory, and this might be the cheapest thing on the list, some drill bits. Some Brad Point bits for woodworking, probably my most used drill bits, and I love these little sets. They're all the most common sizes I use, but when I go away to my mum's to do things, just being able to put this into my toolbox and take with me is fantastic. You can never have enough drill bits, and this is actually my spare set. In case I damage or break one of the bits, I've always got extra. Now in woodworking, one of the most important things, one of the most important skills to have is being able to keep your tools sharp. And I got a decent sharpening stone this year and I actually made a little sharpening station for it. It's got two sides, 300 and 1000 grit, and I think that's fine for me. I've also made a strop to go with it. So I'll put a link to this and it has a little set that comes with the lapping fluid, which I didn't get, but I've ordered some since. I used to use the stones and I always found them a bit of a faff. Moving to a diamond plate has been fantastic, and if you've never tried one, I'd recommend them. Right, now I'm gonna recommend something I don't actually have myself. So I built this bench about a month ago, and I haven't installed a vice on it yet, because I've been deciding what to get. But I've missed it on every single project. I, it's clearly something I use all the time. So a good woodworking vice is essential for me. Uh, I like the cast iron ones, and then there's kind of two ones. You've got either a quick release or just a plain screw one. Uh, quick release is handy, but then the plain screw is mechanically more simple, less to go wrong, and a bit cheaper. So I'm undecided, but I'll put a link down below to a few that I'm considering getting. Maybe I should add this to actually my Christmas list. That's not a bad idea. Now for something else related to the bench build, and I got this new dust separator, a DeWalt one. It's not electric or anything like that, it's just a bit of plastic, but it's fantastic. I hate emptying filters and changing bags on the vac, so anything that makes my life easier is great. Now what I particularly like about this one is how short it is. The fact that I can get it under a workbench is great. It just saves space in a small workshop. It's definitely one of my favorite purchases this year. I have talked about it quite a lot, I think. It's just such a simple thing, but I'm really pleased with it. While I'm under here, I'll talk about these. Now, I'm sure I've mentioned them a few times before, but again, they're one of those simple, quite cheap things that makes your life so much easier. And that's the quick connectors for the hose. 
it's a source of frustration that I've moaned about on the podcast with Keith lots of times, I'm sure, that how every tool comes with a different type of connector. So being able to quickly change between these universal ones and you can always find one that fits is fantastic. Just, yeah, well worth getting a set of these. Next, we've got some books. A couple of good coffee table books and then something a bit more for reference. So the first is Studio. Now this is just showing people's workspaces. I love having a good nose around people's workspaces. I love a good YouTube workshop tour and I'll be doing one soon. So this is great, being able to nose around and it's always get inspiration from looking at other people's workspaces. Now the concept of studios is great, even better though is sheds. This is a lovely book. Again, just looking around other people's sheds, not just woodworking sheds, all sorts of things. I think the one on the cover is actually Paul Smith's shed, the designer, where he goes out to his garden to work. They're lovely, I want them all. Next is the first woodworking book I ever got. Woodworking Step by Step by Dawkin Kingsley is still great today, years on. It talks about tools, step by step guides on how to cut really pretty much every joint you can think of, and it even talks about different species of wood. It's a great reference. Even maybe a woodworking bible, definitely recommended. Now for some wood finish. I'm a big fan of the wax finishes. I've been using some KB wax made by my podcast co-host, Keith Brown, for years. I've still got some left, so I've not just started on this one I've got, but this is made by Leo from Handicraft. Keith has stopped making his now, so you can't get it anymore, but Leo produces his own. So if you'd like some wax finish and be able to support a maker in the community at the same time, I'll put a link to this down below. Right, now for something non-woodworking related, but it's a question I get asked quite a lot, and that is how I film my videos. So what I'm using at the moment are these Sony ZV-E10s. They're pretty cheap in terms of cameras. Definitely not cheap, but cheap in terms of cameras. So what I got is the body and a zoom lens, a 16 to 70 mil. Now, that's great. It's got a wide angle and then a close-up range for that. And then, you can probably see me wearing it, I've got these DJI lav mics. I really like those as well. So that's three different things I bought. In fact, I've actually got two of them because I use two for when I'm filming the cookery channel. But I've had a look and you can get a kit where you get the camera, a zoom lens that has pretty much exactly the same zoom range, and a Sony microphone, and that looks a good deal. So if you wanna get started on doing a bit of videography, I think it's a really good setup. Now, I'm gonna talk again about something I don't have, but I'm looking at buying, and that is the same make as the microphones I use, DJI Pocket 3. It looks a great little tiny gimbal camera. And I think if I was starting out on YouTube now, it might well be the first camera I got these things are great, but they take a bit of learning if you want to use them in manual. This little thing looks like you could be up and running in no time. So if it's something you're interested in getting into, I'd have a look at these two things. So I hope that's given you some inspiration of gifts you can send this year, or even better, receive. There'll be links down below, Amazon affiliate links, so you can check all these things out. So thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos.